Welcome back to Living with the Land in Labrador. Today we're at Academy Canada Trades College, and now we're in the automotive department. Coming up on the show. I love changing up the look of my front entrance, and we have tips from our gardening guru. But first, sushi. So maybe you've tried your hand at making sushi and you're an expert. Or you're like me and you would love to eat it but you've never actually made it yourself. Well we're at the right place because Basho Restaurant has some great sushi dishes. And this is Kaki Shiwada and uh, you know, you're always making sushi here. <laughs> what do you love about sushi? Um, it's just a very simple dish. There are some fine sort of basics to it, but once you get that, uh, you just need a little guidance and you can create that at home, not a problem. Pat, we're going to be making a veggie sushi, is that right? That's right. What do we need? First of all, you need your ingredients. Uh, we've got some finely julienne cucumber here, nothing done to us, just julienne. Um, blanched off uh, spinach, that is only blanched for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And then cooled under water, and then you squeeze it tight to get all the water out. We've got some uh, marinated carrots here. Uh, basically, uh, they're blanched in the blanching liquid, which is uh, one part fish stock, but if you don't have that, you have water or chicken stock, uh, and a half part soy, half part mirin, which is a sweet rice wine that's readily available. And do you use a special type of rice to make sushi? Uh, well, you have to always use a short hand, grand sticky rice, uh, Japanese. Uh, usually it's made in California, and you can pick it up. You can even get it at Dominion. I think it's called Nishiki or Cal Rose. But you can also go to the Asian variety stores and get those as well. And we can't forget the seaweed. This is, wow, this just kind of comes in cheap. Yes, yeah, and you can pick this up pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Asian stores, Asian variety stores. And standard size, this is a standard size. What you want to do is just fold it in half. And it will eventually break apart. You don't, like the, you don't like the rolls too big. And then you get a palm sized piece of rice. Mm -hmm. So what's next? Next we flip it over and then we get your ingredients. And these are carrots that we talked about before. And you can just lay that out. Just lay it out then. And now some julienne cucumbers and you can do that. I just place a couple. Uh, yeah, that's good. As much as you want, actually. It doesn't really matter. So if I didn't like carrots, could I substitute for something else? You can, yeah. You can pretty much put anything in here. And here we have some um, marinated shiitake. A little bit of helmets mayo. You can use that. Get that anywhere. I didn't realize mayo goes on sushi. You know, vegetables are good. Mm. People say roll. This is a misunderstanding. You're not actually rolling it. You're forming it into four sides. So at this point, you see that it's oh, not... Oh, wow. You're not rolling it at all. You're just rolling itself on over itself. What are you rolling it in? You have like a Ziploc bag and a, and a wooden mat. Yeah, oh, it's a, it's a rolling mat actually. You can pick this up anywhere. Uh, all those sushi kits always have them in there. And uh, basically I just use a Ziploc bag to keep it clean, keep the rice from sticking onto it. I'm just going to finish that off with some black sesame seeds. All right, Erin, all done. Why don't we have a little taste? Oh, I'd love to. I got a little soy here for you to dip it in. I'll just take a little piece over here on the side. Dip it in some soy. Mmm. Mmm. How is it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Delicious. Mmm. I'm definitely going to try this at home. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Mm, so good. You can get a basic sushi-making kit at Dominion Stores. I actually picked one up at Chapters for less than 20 bucks. What does your front door say about you? Some simple upgrades, new accessories, and pretty planting can make the front of your house say, Welcome in Style. Here's our garden guru, Don Swarski, with a porch perfect makeover. Mm -hmm. 
Your front door greets your guests and visitors long before you do. It looks at the cars passing by and says, hey, this is what this house is all about. My front door, well, actually, it's not saying very much. It needs a little pick-me-up, a little pizzazz. So today I'm going to give it a makeover. I'm going to give it a new look. Well, actually, I'm going to give it three new looks, and hopefully one of them will speak to you. This look is what I would call gardening chic. It's full of lots of nice lush annuals. It's got nice warm iron accents. What we have are beautiful cast iron urns. To get that nice dripping effect, I've put in some waterfall lobelia, marguerite impamia vine, curly willow to add lots of vertical height. And to keep the color moving up to the doorway, we added two hanging baskets. This is also to keep the symmetry of the planters. Now, to accent the door and to welcome the visitors, I added this nice artificial wreath. And then, we added this beautiful iron bike. And my favorite thing, I went to the garden and I got out some goat beard and some beautiful Jack Frost Archangel. It's absolutely gorgeous. It certainly is a sleek and modern look. It uses a lot of metals, a lot of clean lines, a lot of simple greenery, and it's also asymmetrical, which is another way that you can approach decorating your front entrance. You've got lovely cylinders and simple spheres on top. It's nice and it's very clean looking. Moving to the doorway, what we wanted to do was just keep that nice, simple flow going. So we've got these fantastic geometric containers that I filled with these great black bundles and this nice reeded grass. It just gives a really clean feeling. The grass adds that little bit of lushness. I love this look. It's a little bit of country. It's a little bit of rock and roll. It's a happy medium between ultra-modern and the country gardener. We've got the modernness of the container, and the vinca vines are simple, yet still very lush. And then you've got a little bit more of a country kind of look, a little free form with the curly willow. You've got wonderful flowers that are in this trio of black ceramic pots. The color of the pot echoes the zinc color of these containers here. And moving up to the doorway, we've got this wonderful fresh dual reed. These are artificial boxwood, and they're tied together with a nice blue ribbon that's just a nice goss in here, so it just gives a real loose flow to it. Well, today we looked at three new ways you can dress up your front porch. We have the garden chic, ultra modern, and the bold and abundant, which was our happy medium. I think that they'd all look a little bit better, though, if, um, you know, we took it down these Christmas lights, but that's a job for somebody else. It's a job for Mr. Rodana. Monday, I'm living Newfoundland and Labrador. We show you how to make a centerpiece for a casual dinner party. Plus, Elaine will get you stretching out the kinks. That's all for today's Guide to Better Living. Thanks so much for joining us here at Academy Canada Trades College. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.